I've been saying for a lot of videos this year that I'd like to catch something big and pelagic and I'm yet to do so. So I'd like to change all that today. Yeah, we've been snipped. How? How does that happen? <laughs> Whoa! Oh yeah! Good morning legends and welcome to another Sammy Hitchkey Fishing Adventure. Like most of my videos, it's starting before the sun rises. Look at that, just about to come over the horizon. It's a, uh, a lovely, lovely morning at am offshore. I'm chasing some Spanish mackerel or wahoo. Got my old man the Phantom out with us, currently manning the steering wheel. And we've got three rods out. We've got, uh, we've got a slimy mackerel on that one. I've got a bonito on that one. We've got a tailor on that one. So if there's mackerel here, we can't say we didn't give them a smorgasbord. There's no excuses. Hopefully there's a few around. They're catching mackerel down the coast and catching mackerel up the coast. So I came to the only spot that I haven't heard a report from. Morton, in the middle. Um, they've got to be here. It's just a matter of tracking them down. So we're going to do some trolling this morning. See if we can't run over a few. Like I said before, it is an absolute cork of a morning. There's bugger all wind. It's uh, water's nice and warm, and look, it's just a pleasure being out here. Hopefully, we get rewarded for our efforts, but uh, we've got a few laps to do. Hopefully, one of these rods goes off. Alright, guys, so we are rigging up some baits this morning. Um, we've got two rods out already, we've got a Benito and a Taylor out. We're giving them the full smorgasbord. This is one of the slimies I caught out with Shauno off the Gold Coast. So, they're definitely, uh, definitely worth having in the freezer. You've got your own bait stockpile, you can just use it whenever you see fit. And you've got first class baits ready to go. So I'm running that on a chin weight rig, a four hook chin weight, chin weight rig. Can't talk. Just going to uh, rig that up now. So you want to line those three hooks up like a gang hook. Pretty important to get your spacing correct. You don't want to put too many holes in your bait, otherwise they end up getting waterlogged. Pretty well perfect. See that back hook hangs down. That's the little bite protector. Stops the short strikes. Fingers crossed. Now slide a screwdriver up. Put a hole in the roof of his mouth. Where our wire goes through, got the best chance of it swimming straight and true. Make sure everything's sitting nice. Now see if it swims. Have a go at that. Should be able to see that flashing away. That's swimming better than a real slimy. In fact, they might not eat it because it's too realistic. But at least if you see them swimming like that boat side, you know there's a fair chance they're going to swim out the back and they're not going to spin. A spinning bait generally does not attract much attention. The swimming bait, yeah, that's where the good stuff is. Trap is set. Three rods out, three different baits. I reckon. What do you reckon is going? I reckon the tailor is going to go first. Tailor or the slimy? That slimy is delicious looking. That's that's my prediction. What do you reckon, Tess? Oh, I think the tailor's nice and fresh. 
Taylor is nice and fresh. They all look good though, they're all being well looked after, so they're all in with the shot. It's gonna run over a hungry Mackie now. I will accept a Wahoo as well. I will accept a Wahoo. That is I don't think a dolly will eat one. A marlin will eat one. I've had baits whacked by marlin before. So look. Yeah. Fingers crossed. I've been saying for a lot of videos this year that I'd like to catch something big and pelagic and I'm yet to do so. Lucked out on the tuna, lucked out on the mackerel so far, so I'd like to change all that today. We shall see. Now one of the cool things with the new Suzuki is what's called trial mode. You'll see on this little digital display here I've got trial. Now when you set it to trial mode you can actually go up in 50 RPM increments so you can go tiny little adjustments to your trolling speed. Now when you're trolling baits like this the right speed is absolutely critical to get him to swim right. If you're going too fast those baits can spin, if you're going too slow they won't swim at all. So being able to micro adjust your speed without touching the throttle, absolutely unreal feature. It's uh, very very handy for this sort of stuff. You can see the Susie out the back is ticking along. We're currently going on it uh, between, it's going up and down, it's going between 3.8 and 2.5, 1. Point. See, look, look at that fuel economy. I'm pretty well just running off fumes at the moment. It's just going up and down as we go with the swell. It is uh, yeah, it's very, very fuel efficient. 4.7, that's good. So yeah, with a bit of luck, everything falls into place and we get a, a nice Mackie for our efforts. Let's run over a whole school of buggers. Oh, there we go, there's a hit, there's a hit. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, we've been hit. I don't know how that's missed. No! No! You're kidding! Interesting to see what's left of this. This is a Bonito. Nice and short. It popped the um... Popped the clip. There was trebles everywhere in this bait. There wasn't a spare spot without a treble. It loaded. Yeah, we've been snipped. How? How does that happen? Uh, Guys, riddle me that. This has trebles the entire length. Look, where oh, you're you gotta be kidding, like. Seriously, how do you miss? That is absolutely ridiculous. That was definitely a mackerel looker and a decent one too looking by the uh the bite radius. You are kidding me. You are dead set kidding me. Ugh. And there you have it. Rigged and ready to go. Now we give him a test swim, make sure he swims all straight. When you get it all rigged just right, this is how they can swim. Have a go at this. The tailor. I reckon it's swimming harder than it does when it's alive. But now that is a tasty morsel. Another one of those um, These. gorilla grips. No. Yes. <laughs> Whoa! Oh yeah! Holy screws! Uh, yeah! Oh, 
that was the tailor. That was the tailor. All right. That was a good hit too. That was the that was the hit we wanted. I just gotta keep all the lines clear here. Just chuck him on the ground there, Tess, and I'll just get you to move this other rod real quick. I tell you what, we've put some hours in. Really like to get a look at this guy. All right, once he's injured, I reckon you could just put that on the ground and we might just uh, trek towards him a touch. We might be all right, actually, if you just want to unclip the uh, gaff at the back. Should be able to get a look at him pretty soon here. Now being a Spanish, I'm just going to back that drag off a touch. They usually see the boat and bolt. Well, not that much. He uh, definitely hit the afterburners when he ate it. Like a, see a bit of colour. Oh, there he goes. Yep. There's a bit of colour. He's a nice fish. <coughs> He's a real nice fish. Gaff, please. Come on up. Are you right to gaff him? Uh, He's a nice fish. He's a real nice mac. Yes. <laughs> Language. <laughs> Language. <laughs> and just behind the head there. You right? Here. Yeah, you go. Oh, yeah. He didn't like it. He didn't like it. Yeah, yep. Just watch. In there. That is a really nice Spanish. That's the one we're chasing. Watch him, watch him, watch him, he's still yours. Oh, yeah! Woo. That is a mackerel. That is a big mackerel! Oh, screws! Oh. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. That is a hooter! That is an absolute hooter! Oh, you ripper! I wouldn't put that rod there, we'll put it down the back. I'm going to lay this guy down. Oh, that is an absolute belter Spanish. Oh, that is a big fish. That's, uh, I reckon that's every bit of 15, possibly 17, 15 to 17 kilos. Oh, yes. Phantom, we did it. Oh, that is an absolute belter look how thick he is that is a big mackerel that is a big mackerel so we're coming into probably our fourth hour of trolling we had one hit before that uh, we had that that uh, bonito that was lopped in half we haven't had another touch all morning and or as you can imagine we've discussed just about all of life's problems uh, and we were just cruising and you would have heard it that fish belted that tailor that was the tailor i took the underwater footage of too so you would have seen that that tailor just got absolutely annihilated and this guy is a really really nice mackerel i'm going to get him up and uh and uh get a get a bit of a shot for you before he loses his color but i do have to you do have to be careful because these guys 
are pretty crazy in the tooth department. As, as you can see there. Jeez, oh, he didn't miss too. It looks like he's got just about every hook in him. I'm just going to grab the hooks out, guys, because, uh, yeah, you got to watch out for the teeth. You don't want to have to be watching out for the, uh, the hooks as well. He's got treble, treble, and the second hook there. Thank you, Tez. The hooker. One. He was going nowhere. That's what I like to see. A proper hit where they just eat it and, and it all hooks up and everything works. Tell you what, you couldn't grab that leader, could you? Alright, rig's out. That's one bit of danger. Oh, he's definitely more than 15 kilos. Oh, he's definitely more than 15 kilos. There he is. That is a solid, solid Mackie. Sorry I'm holding him more, Wanko. Uh, not a great deal I can do about that. He is pretty heavy. Alright, we're going to bleed him and uh, get him on the ice. But how good is that? Oh, I'm so soaked. I don't even know if that made sense. But oh, he's heavy. Nice work. Well, you know, it's a good mackerel when that's his tail up there and his head is jammed into the corner. That is a full bag width. That is an absolute stonker. And that's uh, lunch and breakfast. But yeah, we uh, got him on ice nice and quick. He's cooling down. Big fish like that, they're, they're gonna heat up during the fight. So the quicker you can get them on ice, the better quality that meat's gonna be. Particularly on a day like today, there's not much wind, it's pretty warm. You don't wanna be uh, sacrificing any quality on such a beautiful fish like that. Oh, did someone say smoked mackerel? Yes, please. Yes. Well, we're back in the game, got some, we don't have any more Benito, that was the last Benito that um, we had to ditch, he was, he was a bit blown. We've got two more Taylor, so I'll chuck the long one out first, give him the swim test, just put him in troll mode. Can't do it. Oh, look at that guy. Beautiful. There's that Benito, his guts blue, he filled with water after a while they get a bit, get a bit sick of swimming, so he's retired. I think old mate Slime Dog's all right. Give him a little check. Yes, yeah, he's, he's still doing enough. And the short bait, another tailor. Oh, he's swimming like a real one. Yeah, but that's not out the side of the boat. Yep, yep. Yes. Oh no, we just lost, lost the battery. Rightio. Just got a hook up there. And I'm just going to clear some lines. There you go for tension. Good. You're right, keep on. Yep, here we go, we're fresh, clear. No, no, no! He jumped! Oh, come on, mate. Alright. Right. Alright. Mackie number two. There's your prize. 
That's a slimy. Hey? Yeah. It's a slime dogger. He's a nice little fish. You ripper. We said we wanted two, and that's number two. Two from three at the moment. And uh, we've still got a couple of baits left. Perseverance paid off. Yes. All right, we might give this guy a little tap on the head and uh, get some blood out of him, I think. All right. So we've had, this morning we've had the slimy eaten, the, uh, a tailor eaten, and a bonito eaten. They've, they've enjoyed the smorgasbord we had on offer. And that slimy, because we took, or because I took care of it, back when I um, caught it with Shawno and freezed it up and really looked after it, that bait has been on for about five hours now. <clears throat> he was going absolutely nowhere. I'll tell you the hot tip right now. I need longer pliers for this. There we go. All right, hooks out. And there he is there. Nice fish. Woo! Love it. Love it. That's uh, good. Enjoyed that. Worth the early start? Absolutely. Dawn across the bay coming out here and what a cracker day it is. Tapped off with a few lovely spanos. Beautiful. I can already taste the smoker. Well guys, that is Spanish number two. Wasn't as big but still an awesome size fish. Um, and for 10.15 in the morning, just goes to show persistence. When you're trolling like this, you've got a bait in the water the whole time. So when you're casting or you're tra traveling between spots, that's when you don't have lures in the water, don't have baits in the water, so you're not fishing. But this sort of stuff, you've literally got baits in the water. You could catch fish at any point. And uh, they're certainly not thick today by any stretch of the imagination. They're nowhere near thick, but we're cover covering a lot of ground and we're just picking up the odd one. We obviously had that hit. We haven't had two hits in, in the same spot. We had one hit well north, one hit in the middle, and then one down south. So read into that what you may. I don't, there's no real link or correlation there, but just happy that it paid off. We've definitely put in the hours. And um, I did promise Tez, I was like, if we get, well, I started with one. I started with one. If we catch one, we can go chase squid after. And then after we caught one, I accidentally changed it to two. And we've caught two. So I said, once we finish this trial run, we'll go chase some squid. And I think that'll be, uh, yeah, he's happy about it. He, the big fella's happy about it. I, um, I think that would be a pretty awesome way to round out the day. And on a day like this, you know, it's, a, it's a pretty specky conditions. But uh, yeah, I think a couple of calamari rings to go with my, uh, my shallow fried mackerel. Ooh. I reckon that'll just about put the icing on the cake. And, uh, well, the old man went prawning as well, so might have an entree of some prawns. Don't know. Don't know. This is how you go shopping in the ocean. This is how you, we're, we're only short a couple of crabs and we'd have the whole whole seafood basket. But, uh, look, it's not always like this, but when, when it all lines up, it's a pretty good going. One more before we go squidding. Just one. No, squid. squid don't pull us hard. Rightio, it's time to ring the baits in. I'm gonna do it kicking and screaming, but uh, I think we've had our fun with the Mackies. Two good Mackies missed one. No complaints about that. And I would like a feed of squid as well. So we'll pull these baits in and uh, zip back into the bay and see if we can't find a couple. I think we did well, we did well. Bring on the cephalopods. Bring on the cephalopods. Well, we did say we wanted to catch a squid. And I have I have one on. As is Sammy Hitsky fishing tradition. The net is not ready. Oh no. Yeah yeah, that's a good one. That's a real cracker. One? A real one? Yeah. That's a belter. It's a winter spec squid. That is an absolute belter squid. Have a go at the size. Oh, he grabbed me. I think we've been squid jigging for about five minutes, so 
hopefully that's a sign of things to come using the same jig as last time for anyone interested uh, Yamashita it's about that big and has a rattle it's a three apparently and that well that squid that's a ten that's a ten I might even grab a photo squid report Well guys, unfortunately we are out of time for the squid, just the two. Uh, we've got a northerly that's picking up pretty strong and it's predicted to do so, so rather than push our luck, I think we've had a pretty good day so far. We're going to shoot off home. A little bit of calamari there, so all was not wasted. Uh, and we've got a bit of filleting to do, that's for sure. Those Mackies are going to cut up an absolute treat. Anyways, we're going to punch back across the bay and uh, I'll have a chat to you back at home. Well, there you go ladies and gents that is two lovely mackerel for the morning the little one he is uh meter 10 so a meter 10 on the board there and this guy is a meter 50. so um yeah we're definitely gonna have to see how much this one weighs i think there's a pretty good chance it's going over 20. Well, i didn't think it was that long but uh it's quite long and quite heavy so we're about to chuck it on the scales and see what it weighs Righto, moment of truth. I just checked my scales to see how accurate they are on a um, 20 kilo dumbbell, uh, sorry, kettlebell. Pretty good, so let's see. Predictions, Tess? 20 kilos, that's what we said. What did you say, 18, between 18 and 21? I said between 19 and 21. All right. I reckon it might be a bit more than 20. I'll go to the 21 side. Oh, I need a bit of hook. Moment of truth. Oh. What is it? Take your hand away, let's have a look. Take your hand away. Uh. It is 21 and a half, 22. 22 <coughs> kilos, nice one. Well guys, I'm going to show you how to cut the small one up. Uh, that big one's going to be a mission. I don't reckon I can do it really awesomely. So I'm going to, going to do this one. Mackies are pretty easy to fill it. Um, you would have seen, I'm sure you all would have seen those videos on YouTube of the Mackie pros. They just go, pff, pff, pff. I need to take a bit more care. I don't catch that many mackerel. So what I like to do, I use a big thick bladed knife like that because it's uh, really easy to run along a backbone. I go behind the head down the spine and then I do along the back there run it all the way to the back and then my next pass through goes all the way to the backbone now then you do the other side just before his bum there same deal and then the second pass I go all the way to the spine you should be able to feel the uh, the bones on his backbone there as you run along and that's why I like this bigger knife because it's got a bigger surface area to run along your little knives they can kind of catch in uh, this is just me personally I know everyone's got their preferred way to do it but this is how I kind of got found my feet with it so I'll stick to it now there is a lot more meat up there I'll get that a bit later but you do essentially the same thing you notice I didn't take that fillet off because these guys are big barrels it's a lot easier to do all your cuts than take one fillet off and then uh, go back and nick the, the meat off the bone there so you can just rip it off that way rather than trying to fill it on an angle up his head. Again, if you're a pro filleter, I'm sure you can do it a lot better and in two, st two strokes. But for the average wreck fishers like myself, I like to take a bit of time, take a bit of care, make sure I get all the meat out because uh, the old Spanny Mac, good chewing. Towards the tail. Rightio. Now, this is where I change knives. I've got my flexible movie knife there, and you go in behind the tail, come up, I stick it in there. Make sure you don't stab yourself when you're doing that. Cut yourself a little finger hole. Look at 
the beautiful white flesh. And you just peel the meat off. So I just go like this over the over the backbone. So and because you've gone to the the backbone on both sides, you can just peel it off. Now up the top here, we run into the ribs and the pin bones. Now they're pretty soft, being a Mackie, they're pretty soft. So you can flick through most of them. And then run over the rib cage. Oh, he's a boy. And that's fillet number one. There you go. It's two prime fillets of Spanny Mac. Um, I'll just explain you through, otherwise you're gonna end up watching an hour long video. To get the racks, you just get your big knife and you cut in there, take the guts out and snap his tail off. And then you can break the racks up into the smaller portions to chuck in the barbecue. Otherwise, unless you've got a massive barbecue, you can do the whole lot at once. There's a heap of meat up here. I've never chucked the mackerel head on the, on the barbecue by itself, but there's a heap of meat up here. So you can just usually cut a big triangle in there and, uh, and get that out. Uh, the belly flaps, they're pretty good bait, so I usually keep them for bait. Um, and the wings you can you can chuck on the barbecue as well. So they're a pretty low waste fish. They're, they're pretty cool, the old Spanny Mac. What we'll do is we'll dress these fillets up. What I usually do is um, take the, the, the bloodline out of the middle um, and take the pin bones out. So you've got the two sections, and then I'll show you a quick and easy way to skin them. Now when it comes to skinning big pelagic fish like this, there's a bit of a trick to it. If you try and do the whole lot in one go, it's really, really difficult. You end up putting a knife through or leaving about that much meat on there, it's quite hard. Um, because they don't have like scales per se, like a normal fish where you can just run your knife along that kind of plate of armor, uh, it makes that makes it really easy. These guys, you just if you want one bit of angle change in your knife, just go straight through the skin. So what I like to do is just cut it off in smaller chunks from the top down. And that just gives you a lot smaller distance you have to travel. Your knife can stay positioned well. You can get it into a good position and run it through and you're laughing. So um, usually do it at the filleting table like this in meal size chunks, so like that. And just work your knife backwards and forwards like so. No waste. And that way you don't cut through the skin. You don't end up wasting half your fillet and you've got beautiful ready to rock and roll chunks of Mackie flesh or whatever you managed to catch like that. Beautiful. There's a little hot tip for you. There you go. One mackerel and that's an 11 litre mop bucket overflowing. I'll tell you what, it feels pretty heavy too. So I reckon they'd be close to, oh, probably, yeah, probably 11 kilos, maybe 12 kilos of meat in there. That is a good return. Now, I'm just gonna have Curiosity will always get the better of you. You know, a quick look inside its guts, see what it's been eating. Oh, not a great deal. There's something up there. Jeez, it's tough. the fins off. Better off why. It's a fin off something big. And apart from that, empty. That's the tail fin off something. Somebody's swim bait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> off one of me old me we did miss a hit, could have been that. It doesn't look like a Benito tail. Hmm, not sure. Not sure. Oh, I know. Well, I've got some rack cutting up to do and uh, finish the rest of the head. Starting to lose light. After that, I'm having a beer. Oh, right, I'll catch you when we're cooking. Unfortunately, guys, I didn't get time to film any of the cook ups with the Spanish mackerel. Uh, I froze majority of it up. I uh, did have two fresh feeds, but it was just stock standard, a bit of salt and pepper, and straight on the fry pan. Nothing crazy at all. Uh, as many of you would know, 
Spanish mackerel is a fine, fine table fare. So uh, you really can tart it up and use it in a whole heap of different recipes. I just didn't get a chance to do it. I apologize for that. Hey guys, that is all we've got time for this week. I hope you enjoyed the episode as much as I enjoyed filming and editing it. Probably one of my favorites for this year. I really love towing baits for big mackerel. And to get that one, the 21 kegger, well, that was just the icing on the cake. I reckon probably one of my best videos this year. So much so that I've got a favor to ask. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big old share. Chuck it up on your Instagram story. Share the YouTube link on your Facebook wall. Let's get this video going all the way out there so everyone who's not fishing right now can watch it and enjoy it. I'd really, really appreciate it and I reckon there's plenty of fishers out there who'd really enjoy watching it as well. Now, if you did like or learn something from this video, guys, make sure you smash that like button. Leave us a comment below. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. There's plenty more fishing action to come. I've still got plenty of footage in the bank, so we are right as rain for the next little bit. Uh, if you do want to support the channel, grab yourself a hat off my website. There is nine left, so make sure you get on there quick. www.sammyhitskyfishing.com Socials, I'm on Instagram, Sammy underscore Hitsky underscore fishing. I'm on TikTok, which is exactly the same, and Facebook, exactly the same without the underscores. So, guys, hope you're having a bit of fun. Hope you're getting out fishing where you can. Until next week, have a good one. Hope you stay safe.